the next challenge is uh, having a structure. A lot of students uh, don't have a structure or they think, they think that when they are writing an essay, for example, using uh, argue, 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 counter, 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 rebut, that is a structure. But, but to me, that is not a structure. Right? That, mm. is, that is very fluid. Students need to think about how, for example, to select their points. They need to know how to plan their points and then ultimately write out their points. You know? mm. So uh, I've seen many, many students who, when they, for example, paper one, uh, which is the essay component, when they receive the paper, they will look at a question. They will primarily select the question based on content. And then they will jot down a few points here and there. And then after maybe about 10 minutes of jotting down some points and drawing some circles and crosses, they will start writing. And to me, that is inadequate. Right? If you don't know the structure, if you can't implement a structure in your planning phase, then you are definitely going to not score very well. Right. Okay. So kind of like to to uh, give to kind of uh, give you an analogy, right? To give you an analogy. Okay. I'll give you two analogies. Uh, one is baking a cake, right? When we bake a cake, we line up our ingredients. Uh, we put those ingredients together, right? When we are baking a cake, we don't run to the fridge, take the flour, come to the counter, right? We don't run to the pantry, take the sugar, uh, pour into the, the bowl. We don't do that. We line up all our ingredients and we mix them with inappropriate amounts. And this is something students don't do, right? Mm. They don't do. When I talk about structure, I'm primarily talking about ways in which you can uh, write an essay and get consistent results almost every time. You know? It's just like when you go to your favorite Kuei Tiao uh, hawker, he makes the Kuei Tiao in the same way. You know? uh, he doesn't decide to change things. He doesn't decide to do anything new. It's always the same way. And uh, the second analogy that I would like to share with you is what's called a universal tension. When we look at, um, let's say, some exciting movie like maybe the Avengers or, or uh, Transformers, they always start from an angle of helplessness. Then they will come another situation where there is helplessness. But this time, helplessness turns into urgency. Right? And then they, they put in more effort, more action, you know, to, to bring about this urgency. But before this urgency takes place, right, there is anger, right? So you have helplessness, you have anger, you have urgency. And then through this urgency, they try and solve the problem. And then eventually, you have a safe zone, right? Where everybody is happy, the bad guy is vanquished, the, the, the bad guy is uh, gotten rid of, and, uh, you know, truth prevails. So this is a very simple model, right? Where we see it repeated in good selling, best selling movies over and over again, right? Helplessness, anger, urgency, safe zone, right? So, oh. yeah. So this is just one model, right? I, I share many different models with my students and how they can use different models to ensure that their essays are structured. The moment they see a question, they know how to structure their points within these models. So what happens is that students ultimately tell a story. They're not just, just writing an argumentative paragraph. And then the second paragraph has no link to the first paragraph. You know? So uh, I, I think that students need to think about how they can tell a story rather than just argue, 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 counter, counter, rebut. Uh, they, they shouldn't be be doing that. I use the, the Hollywood model to tell you that it is very possible to write an essay even using this model, right? To show, for see, example, uh, for example, if they say, can technology solve uh, poverty? Or if they say, technology is the key to solving poverty, discuss, right? If that's a question that a student is attempting, then they can show, for example, the helplessness, how poverty is helpless without technology, right? And then how does this aspect uh, create some level of tension, not necessarily anger, but tension, right, within people that may be poor? And then comes the urgency part. So how has technology solved 
the problems of the poor. All right. And then ultimately, uh, safe zone, right? What, what are the lasting benefits of technology and how they have enabled the poor to overcome certain issues that they are facing? So it, it can be used in this model as well. Instead of always firefighting, okay, what is the one thing that students can adopt immediately okay, to, from, a, for, from, from consistently uh, firefighting to be an expert uh, baker to put all the ingredients nicely? <laughs> so so uh, let's maybe deal with a topic, let's say poverty. Uh, topic yep. of poverty. So uh, if a student needs to understand uh, basically uh, a simple structure, number one, he has to understand who are the people who are champions of poverty, right? Who are international leaders or, or certain advocates, right? And this works for every single topic that they can prepare for. Right. Number one, understand who are the people, who are the champions that can or are fighting to, to eliminate or alleviate poverty. That's number one, people. Number two, organizations. Which organizations are at the forefront of dealing with poverty? Right. And number three is milestones. Right. Milestones. So take, for example, the Sustainable Development Goal. It is not possible to discuss poverty without discussing sustainable development goal because SDG number one is to eradicate poverty in all its forms in the world, right? By 2030, right? So these are essentially the key ingredients uh, to deal with poverty. Number one, to know people. Number two, organizations. Number three, milestones, right? And with this, with this alone, uh, you will see that almost one third of the essay, 30% of the essay can already be written. Every time you are discussing poverty, 30% of this information is there already. Right? Mm. Because you cannot discuss poverty without discussing how certain people have been influential, how certain organizations have been influential, right? I and see. similarly, the, the milestones. So this can apply for every single topic. Right? So yeah, this, this is the easiest uh, thing I can tell you in, in one, two minutes to, to start doing right away. Uh, start doing. So if you don't know, take for example, if you are doing uh, another topic, let's say crime and punishment or sports, right? If you don't know these three things, uh, uh, go and find out. Uh. The moment you find out, you will realize that 30% of the essay can be very easily written. 